In this video, we will be focusing on qualitative analysis. Now, what is qualitative analysis? It is the process of identifying unknown substances in a solution. At all levels, students are required to describe the use of aqueous sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia to identify different ions, such as aluminium, ammonium, calcium, copper 2 ions, iron 2 and iron 3 ions, lead 2 ions, and zinc ions. So in this video, we will be focusing on identifying cations with the use of aqueous sodium hydroxide. When we add aqueous sodium hydroxide to salt solution, there are two possible outcomes. One, precipitate will form, and the other, precipitate will not form. In a cation test, the only cation that does not produce precipitate with the addition of sodium hydroxide is ammonium ion. To double confirm whether the cation is really ammonium ion, we can actually heat the solution. If upon heating, a colorless and pungent gas is produced, then you can confirm that the identity of this gas is ammonia. Now this gas is pretty easy to identify even though it's colorless because it has this pungent smell. To further confirm the identity, we can actually use a moist red litmus paper. Okay, if we put it at the mouth of the test tube, the ammonium gas, which is an alkali gas, will actually turn this moist red litmus paper blue. So with all these tests, we confirm that ammonia is present, hence the cation that is present in the solution must be ammonium ion. So what happened is, we know that alkali, which now is sodium hydroxide, they do react with ammonium salts to produce salt, ammonia gas, and water. So when we test for cation, we are adding sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali, into this salt solution. No precipitate is formed because there is no insoluble salt that is produced in this whole reaction. We can heat the solution to force out the ammonia gas that is produced. Ammonia gas, if we do not heat it, will remain in the solution because ammonia gas is a very soluble gas. So now let's move on to the next category. If precipitate is formed when we add sodium hydroxide into the salt solution. Now, precipitate that are formed could be either white or colored. Let's focus on the formation of white precipitate. Now, if white precipitate is formed, then the possible cations that are present could be calcium, zinc, aluminium, and lead. To narrow down on the single cation, what we can do is further add more sodium hydroxide. If the white precipitate does not dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide, or not, we can say if the white precipitate remains insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide, then we can confirm that calcium ion is present. Now, why does calcium ion form white precipitate when sodium hydroxide is added? Now, the salt solution that contains calcium ion, let's take for example, in this case, we have calcium chloride. It will actually react with sodium hydroxide to form calcium hydroxide and a soluble salt. So the white precipitate that we observe is actually calcium hydroxide. Now we know that calcium hydroxide is actually spirally soluble, which means that at low concentration of hydroxide ions, calcium hydroxide will actually remain soluble, meaning we will not observe any white precipitate. When sodium hydroxide is present, concentration of hydroxide ion is high. Why is it so? Because sodium hydroxide, being a strong alkali, will fully ionize to produce high concentration of hydroxide ions. If the concentration of hydroxide ion is high, then calcium hydroxide will have high concentration, leading to the formation of white precipitate. Now what about the other case? When we add excess sodium hydroxide, if the white precipitate dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide, then the possible cations that are present will be zinc, aluminium ions and lead ions. For easy memory, I will advise students to remember it as Z, zinc, aluminium and lead too. So which one of these three ions is present in the salt solution? To narrow the options, we can further test with aqueous ammonia. If we add aqueous ammonia into the salt solution, white precipitate will still be observed. But if we further add and if the white precipitate dissolves in excess aqueous ammonia, then we can confirm that hey, zinc must be present. The other two ions, lead two ions and aluminium ions, the white precipitate remain insoluble in excess aqueous ammonia. 
So if that's the case, what can we do to distinguish lead-2 ions from aluminium ions? Take a moment to think about it. Now, have you thought of a method? Now, there are two ways that you can distinguish lead-2 ions from aluminium ions. Now, the first way, you can actually add salt solutions that contain iodide ions, for example, potassium iodide. So what will happen is, if the unknown solution contains lead-2 ions, then you will see yellow precipitate form if you add in potassium iodide into the solution. The yellow precipitate is lead-2 iodide, which is yellow color. Alternatively, a more common method, we can add any solution that contains chloride or sulfate ions. For example, we can add sodium chloride solution or not, we can add potassium sulfate solution. When any of this solution is added, and if we see white precipitate form, then we can confirm that lead-2 ions must be present. Aluminium ions do not form precipitate with chloride or sulfate ions because aluminium chloride and aluminium sulfate, they are both soluble in water. Now, we actually learned this solubility rule when we dealt with salts in an earlier chapter. Let's recap on this. You may want to refer to this table to have a very quick recap. So at all levels, the salts that we are concerned with are carbonate salts, nitrate salts, chloride salts, and sulfate salts. The two salts that we are focusing on now are chloride salts and sulfate salts. So all chlorides are soluble except lead-2 chloride and silver chloride. You can remember it as called little sailor, which is CLX. Chlorides that are insoluble are lead-2 chloride and silver chloride. What about sulfates? Now all sulfate salts are soluble except the following three calcium sulfate lead to sulfate and barium sulfate now an easy way to remember is c cute little baby s c l b now s will be sulfate sulfate salts that are insoluble are calcium sulfate lead to sulfate and barium sulfate so now to distinguish aluminium ion from lead to ions we are actually making use of this solubility rule Okay, so we add any solution that contains sulfate ions or chloride ions, only lead two ions will form precipitate with chloride and sulfates. If white precipitate is formed, then we can confirm that the cation that is present in this unknown solution must be lead two ions. If there's no precipitate form, if we add any solution that contains sulfate ions or chloride ions, then we can confirm that hey, the cation that is present must be aluminium ions. Now let's move on to the other category where colored precipitate is formed. Now things get easier with colored precipitates because the color of the precipitate is unique to the cation. If you add sodium hydroxide into the salt solution and you see light blue precipitate, then you can confirm that copper ions are present. On adding excess sodium hydroxide, this light blue precipitate will remain insoluble. If you add sodium hydroxide to the salt solution and you see green precipitate, then you can confirm that the cation that is present is iron 2 ions. Again, the green precipitate does not dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide. If you see a reddish brown precipitate form, then you can confirm that the cation that is present is iron 3 ions. Similarly, the reddish brown precipitate does not dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia. So what exactly are these precipitates that are formed? This precipitate form in each of these reactions is actually the hydroxide of the metal ion. Let's take for example, let's say the salt solution that we are using now is copper nitrate solution and we add sodium hydroxide into copper nitrate. What will happen is copper hydroxide will form and copper hydroxide is an insoluble salt and a side product Sodium nitrate will also form, and this sodium nitrate is soluble in water. So the light blue precipitate that you see is actually copper hydroxide, which is insoluble. If you find this video useful, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Don't forget to share the video with your friends. If you'd like to have more chemistry resources, you may check out my website. The link is in the description below. Have fun learning chemistry, and I will see you soon.